If you have your Bibles with you tonight, I want you to turn with me to the book of Revelation, the third chapter. I hope somebody came to have a little church tonight. Revelation chapter number 3, verse number 13 is where we will begin reading. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou were cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. That thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see, and as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous therefore, and repent, and listen to what the Lord says, not to the world, but to the church. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. My question to you tonight would be this. What was God doing outside the church? I can tell you what He was doing outside. They had begot, became so formal, so religious, and lost relationship, that they were going through the motions. And didn't even realize that God wasn't even in the middle of them. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. And to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. I've come into this place to preach to you on this subject tonight. God's church is on fire. God's church is on fire. Hallelujah. Let's pray together. Holy God, I'm asking you in the remainder of this service that you would set us on fire afresh and anew again. Lord, if there's anybody in this place whose flames have become cold in them, I pray that there would be a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost that would fall down in this service, God. If there's anybody in this house, God, whose fire has become embers, I pray that there would be a stirring of the Spirit tonight that would cause there to be once again a blaze of the Holy Ghost in their life. That same fire that burned on the day that they received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I pray that before we leave this service tonight, it would not be any less than that day, but God, there would be a fire burning in us greater than we've ever had before, that we can burn for you in this generation, and we pray it in the name that's above every name, and everybody say in Jesus' name, won't you put your hands together one more time, and worship the Lord in this place like you really want Him to come down and visit us tonight. I want to remind you that you're in an apostolic church. So I'm going to grant you the privilege to be seated, but that means you can get up any time that you get ready. Amen. I want to remind this church tonight, and for those that maybe weren't here, I want to remind you again of the vision that God gave your pastor before I was ever even elected as pastor of this church. 
As I was in the altar praying that night and the woman of God came and laid her hands upon me and began to pray for me, all of a sudden a vision was opened up to me. And in that vision, I was hovering over this church and I was looking down upon it. And as I was looking, all of a sudden, the roof began to catch fire in the church. It wasn't a fire like the building was on fire and it was being consumed. But it was the fire of God that was burning on top of this roof. And as I began to behold that fire, all of a sudden, that fire began to, to make a revolution and it began to roll rotate like a tornado of fire over this building and while I was beholding that fire all of a sudden I could see people began to be drawn into that vortex that was pulling them because if you want to know how to have Holy Ghost revival and souls come into the church you just let the fire of God begin to burn in a congregation service after service it'll begin to draw people a fire will draw souls It'll draw people to it. If you don't believe me, you let a house catch on fire in the city and see if there won't be vehicles that begin to pass by wondering what's going on in the fire. And I've come to tell this church tonight, God didn't call us to be casual. God didn't call us to be carnal. He called us to be a church that is set on fire in the Holy Ghost. As I began to stand there and watch that fire draw souls into it, the Lord spoke to me in that vision and said, I will visit you in Brandon. And God has been visiting us in Brandon. But I want us to understand tonight that just because God begins to visit us doesn't mean that we can become comfortable in what God is doing. There has to be a passion that burns on the inside of us that says, I'm not going to be satisfied with where I am. I am. I'm not going to sit on a pew and become complacent that there's going to be a burning on the inside of me that's caused me to reach for more of God than I've ever had before. Matthew chapter number 3 verse 11. John the Baptist was speaking and he said I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance but he that cometh after me is mightier than I whose shoes I am not worthy to bear he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire and in Acts the second chapter verse number one when the day of Pentecost was fully come they were all in one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house uh, where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues uh, like as of fire and it sat upon each of them And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. I submit to you tonight that this Holy Ghost filled church was born in the fire and then when Jesus comes we're going to have to still be moving in the fire of the Holy Ghost. We can't allow there to be a moment in our life where we become comfortable because of the blessings of God. I refuse to be the church of Laodicea to see in this generation though there may be many that sit on pews and and soak up the blessings of God and get comfortable and carnal and lazy you're looking at one preacher who's pastoring a church in a city that we will not be the church of Laodicea we will not be carnal we will not be casual we're going to press toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus and we're going to stay in the fire of the Holy Holy God! In Leviticus 6 and 13, the Bible says, The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar, and it shall never go out. It was God that started the initial fire in the tabernacle. It was God that started it. But it was up to the priest to keep it burning. And the Lord said, I've started a fire and don't you ever let it go out. 
You make sure you gather whatever's necessary and place it upon the fire and you make sure that the fire doesn't go out. Can I tell you when you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, uh, God started a fire in your spirit but it's your responsibility and it's my responsibility to make sure that that fire keeps burning and we don't let it go out. Leviticus 3 and 5 it says Aaron's son shall burn it on the altar upon the burnt sacrifice which is upon the wood that is on the fire and it is an offering made by fire and listen to what the Bible says about an offering that's made by fire it's a sweet savor unto the Lord there is a drastic difference between just an offering of worship and praise that we come into the house to offer up to God and an offering that's in the fire of the Holy Ghost. It is possible for you to come in and offer an offering that has no emotion behind it. It has no feeling. Uh, you're just going through the motion. That's exactly where the church of Laodicea was. The Lord said, I know your works. But we got a problem. And the problem is, you're just sitting on the fringes. You're not cold. He said, but you're surely not hot. He said, you just got enough of carnality to keep you on the cool side. And just enough of me to keep you on the warm side. And he said, you're just lukewarm. And he said, I'm going to spew you out. Because you hear me tonight. There's only one kind of church that's going to make it to heaven. And that's a church uh, that's still on fire in the Holy Ghost. Uh, the Lord said, I'm coming back for a glorious church uh, that has made herself ready. Uh, without spot, uh, without wrinkle, and without blemish. Uh, let me tell you tonight, there's nothing glorious uh, about a church that's not having a move of the Holy Ghost on a regular basis. I've come to pastor a church in this city that is on fire in the Spirit. When you begin to look into the Old Testament, not only was that fire to never go out, but every offering that was offered unto the Lord was by fire. They made the meat offering by fire. They made the burnt offering by fire. They made the peace offering by fire. It was all by fire. The fire on the altar was started by God and they were instructed to never let it go out. So God started the fire, but it was the responsibility of the priest to keep it going. We cannot afford in the hour that we're living and how we're so near to the coming of the Lord to let the fire go out in the apostolic church. Like Paul told his son in the gospel, Timothy, he said, Timothy, you stir up the gift of God which is in you. You do it, Timothy. You're the one that's got to keep it burning. Your pastor can't keep it burning. I can't do it for you, Timothy. You got to do it for yourself. You got to make sure that you stay connected to the source of that initial fire that burned in your life. And that's a fresh relationship with Jesus Christ. You got to stay close to that initial fire that began in your life. And you got to make sure that you're living a life of prayer, Timothy. You got to make sure that you find yourself in a place with God where you can hear His voice and fresh fire can come down from heaven in your life as you're offering up a sacrifice of praise. God started a fire in you, Timothy, but you got to keep it going. It is us, up to us how hot our fire burns. You can have a match. You can have a forest fire. And then there's a fire that gets so hot that they call it flashpoint. It gets so hot that without a flame even touching stuff around it, the things around it just burst into flame. It's just like you're standing there 
and I'm the fire and this candle's over here and without me even touching it's poof it's up in fire because there's so much heat and intensity I don't know about you but I want to be like the apostle Paul historians say that they had to change the guard out on Paul every few minutes because if they didn't he would convert them to the gospel I want to be so on fire in the Holy Ghost that I'm converting people and they're catching on fire because of my fire I want people to look at me and say there's something about him that's different. He's got something about him that the average Christian person doesn't have. And I want that to be the fire of the Holy Ghost. I want to be like John the Baptist when he said, I must decrease so that he can increase in my life. And when you do that, guess what's going to happen? You're going to catch on fire because the Bible says my God is a consuming fire. We've got to be on fire in our prayer time. James 5 and 16 says this. Confess your faults one to another. Pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Listen to what Mr. Webster says about the word fervent. So you can understand what kind of prayers God intends for the apostolic church to be praying. Webster's Dictionary says this, that the word fervent means very hot. Glowing with heat. Exhibiting or marked by intensity of feeling. Now Lord... We want you to come down in our service tonight. That's not fervent. Lord, I sure would like for you to save my family. That's not fervent. Fervent is a little more like this. I wonder how much quicker God would answer if we started praying with a little more intensity. There's one thing that has marked the apostolic church since its beginning. And they knew how to pray and shake Him. As a matter of fact, in the book of Acts, chapter number 4, verse 31, and it said, And when they had prayed, the house was shaken. Where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And spake the word of God with boldness. That don't sound like a little laying me down to sleep prayer to me. It sounds like to me that there was a group of people that knew a little bit about fervent praying. I don't know if you feel what I feel in this place, but I got a feeling that at the end of this thing, if we will respond to what God is wanting to do, there's going to be a flashpoint fire that's going to be set in this place, and the Holy Ghost is going to fall down and begin to burn into some people's lives in a way he's never burned before. Our prayers need to be set on fire of heaven. The prayers of the apostolic church should be prayers that are filled with passion and intensity. One thing is for sure. You didn't get delivered from where you were by casual prayer. But it were the prayers of a great burden and intensity that delivered you from hell. And we owe it to this generation of lost souls to pray prayers that will set this world on fire. This city has got to have a church in it that's going to set this world on fire in our prayer time. We've got to pray with passion. We've got to pray with intensity. We've got to pray with a boldness. We've got to pray with a confidence that when we lift up our voice, God is going to answer. Our worship 
has got to be filled with the fire of the Holy Ghost. There is just something about worship that is filled with emotion and intensity and sincerity before the Lord that moves heaven and earth. As the church of the living God, if we want the souls of the lost to be set on fire with our prayers and worship, we need to create an atmosphere filled with so much Holy Ghost heat. It doesn't take much for their soul to catch on fire. I wasn't in the church 50 years ago because I'm not 50. only been in the church 25 years but I've heard about them worship services and been into a few of them myself where the people of God were so in love with the God that they came to worship that they began to send up a sacrifice of praise that filled the tabernacle in such a way they didn't care if they wrinkled their clothes they didn't care if they messed up their hair they didn't care what their neighbor thought about them they didn't care if the guest in the house was offended it wasn't between them and nobody but their God and they come to worship like David worshipped when the Bible says he was out in front of the Ark of the Covenant dancing and magnifying the Lord in such a way that his own wife looked out the window and said, look at you, David. You're the king of Israel out there uncovering yourself and dancing before the people. And he said, woman, you just might as well keep your mouth shut. I didn't do it for you. I didn't do it for them. I did it for him. And I'm going to worship him anyhow. We need to have some of those uh, worship services where the Spirit of God uh, just begins to move in a little in a way uh, that somebody's running down that aisle uh, and somebody's dancing in the altar uh, and some ladies' bobby pins are flying all over the place uh, and people are speaking in dot songs uh, and shouting uh, and dancing and worshiping a God uh, until they just get lost. You know what happens in that kind of a worship service? If there's somebody sitting on the pew that don't have the Holy Ghost, uh, it'll make them want the Holy Ghost. I can remember as the 14-year-old young man, hair down to my shoulder, sitting in an apostolic church for the first time since I was a little bitty kid. Uh, and Sister Sister e, uh, Delcy Ellard was in a wheelchair and she was sitting there and she couldn't walk anymore. And all of a sudden I'm sitting on the back row and she's about midway up. Uh, and all of a sudden she just gets uh, a hold of that wheelchair and pushes herself up and she goes, Whoa! When the Holy Ghost got to moving on her and all of them long hairs on my head stood up and I didn't know what she had but I knew one thing, I wanted what she had. It did something in me. It set a fire on the inside of me that caused me to crave the God that she was serving and guess what? I had an encounter with him and he filled me with the same Holy Ghost she's got and I've been on fire ever since and I'm going to worship him with everything I've got. I'm not going to be casual about it. It wasn't a casual thing when he set me free. Come on, let's magnify the Lord. I'm not looking for what this younger generation's got going on. They can have church with the fogs and the lights and all that garbage they want to. All I need is the fire of God to fall down and the house will be filled with all the smoke you need. All that garbage is just an excuse for the lack of a move of God. And they're having to entertain people into the house. 
But when you start having a genuine move of the Holy Ghost, when people start getting up out of their wheelchairs and blind eyes start getting open and deaf ears unstop, you won't have to send out a bunch of invitations for church. Because when people start hearing about the miracles and the move of God, hallelujah, just like in the book of Acts it said, and when it was noised abroad, there was a gathering of a group of people. And after that initial 120, God gathered him together another 3,000 that were filled with the Holy Ghost on that day. You think it's hard for God to fill up this little old sanctuary but I'm here to tell you it's not in a moment's time a hand of God can begin to move in this city and we wouldn't be able to hold them all But it's only going to happen when there's a group of people that says, I'm not going to be cold, I'm not going to be casual, and I'm surely not going to be carnal, but I'm going to be set on fire in the Holy Ghost. John chapter 4, verse 23. The hour cometh and now is. Everybody say now. When the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit. Notice that that's not a capital S. If it was a capital S, then it's talking about God's Spirit and the Holy Ghost. That's a little S. That means He's looking for somebody to worship Him in your spirit. He's looking for somebody that will give a sacrifice unto Him that comes from right here. You see, if we're not careful, we sit around and we wait until we feel God moving on us to worship. But that's backwards. You don't wait on God to move on you to worship. You worship so that God will move in you. He inhabits the praises of His people. And so when you step out of that aisle and you begin to move around and begin to worship God, you might not feel anything at first. But I can promise you one thing. You won't worship Him very long before you start feeling something. And that's what He's looking for in this hour. And if we could ever get a glimpse of the power of our worship... We've seen it on several occasions in this house as I've preached over and over again about the power of our worship. And you see it in the man of Gadara that's bound up and crazy and out of its mind and possessed with demons. But I'm going to tell you tonight, if you'll find your way to the feet of Jesus and begin to worship Him, there is deliverance found when you worship God. There's healing when we begin to worship and exalt Him, there's deliverance, there's power, there's salvation. There's a conviction that we need in this generation that moves upon people that are living in sin. That when we begin to worship and magnify the Lord and see Him high and lifted up and cry, Holy, 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 then it causes the unholy to feel like the prophet Isaiah when he said, Woe is me. I'm a man of unclean lips. But that won't happen until the saints of God put him where he needs to be so the sinners will have a chance to see him there also. The hour cometh and now he is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, capital S. And they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit, the less, and in truth. We cannot do what God desires for us in this hour without a move of the Holy Ghost and fire. You cannot separate the two. You can't have the Holy Ghost and not fire. When you get the Holy Ghost, you get fire. But you have to keep that fire going. See, the easy thing is just to grow cold. 
Because all you got to do to grow cold is receive the Holy Ghost and then just do nothing. But if you're going to keep the fire going, it's going to take effort. You've got to make up in your mind as an individual that I am not going to be a cold, casual, or lukewarm Christian because in reality there is no such thing. Really, the only kind of Christian that there is is one that's set on fire of the Holy Ghost. There will be no cold or lukewarm souls in heaven. There will be no excuses for coldness or carnality accepted. It's time for us as individuals and as a church to make up our mind that we are going to be on fire. And not only are we going to be on fire, but there are different levels of fire that we can reach. And we can make it as hot in the Spirit as we have desire to. For I can assure you, God is not going to withhold any good thing from us if we seek it. If this church is going to be a church on fire, then I ask why not let it begin right now. Why not let the Holy Ghost set you on fire in your spirit right now? Why not let the high praises of God begin to erupt in this house until the sacrifice is so acceptable unto the Lord that He sends the fire down just as He did when Elijah was on the mountain or when Solomon dedicated the temple? The Scripture says that our God is a consuming fire. There's some things that fire does. First of all, fire draws people. Secondly, fire purges and burns away everything that is not fireproof. Fire cleanses and sterilizes. It has the ability to burn unclean things out of your life. If you're struggling with sin, then you need the fresh fire of the Holy Ghost in your life. If you're struggling with your attitude, then you need the fresh fire of the Holy Ghost in your life. If you're struggling to enjoy being in the house of God, then you need the fresh touch of the fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire is exciting. Fire is all, always draws a crowd when it's seen. If you don't believe me, just look at the book of Acts. Everywhere the fire fell, there was a crowd that gathered. And as we stand together, if you're able, my prayer tonight in this house is that somebody's soul would catch on fire. Oh. Woo. I wonder if there's anybody in this house that while I've been preaching your mind has went back to a day when there was something that burned on the inside of you like a raging fire but over time you've allowed that fire to grow dim and you've said within yourself, Oh God, Oh, that it would burn in me one more time. Maybe there's somebody here tonight that's like a Samson. But you've been wounded in your spirit. Wounded in your life. And you feel like the anointing has departed. You feel like you've just been going through the motions spiritually grinding at the meal. And your life doesn't have any purpose. While I've been preaching tonight, there's something rose up in you and said, God, one more time. One more time, God. I want you to let the fire fall in my life. One more time, I want to feel the anointing of your presence near to me. God, if you'll just strike that fire in me again, 
I'll maintain a prayer life to keep it going. I'll find my way to your word to fuel the flames of faith to keep that fire burning. And God, I'll burn for you until you come. I just wonder if there's anybody in this house tonight. I don't care if you're a guest. I don't care if you've been in the church two years. I, I don't care if you've been in the church for 50 years. I, I wonder if there's somebody in this house tonight that says, God, I realize that I've got to have more of you than I've ever had before. And I want you to set me on fire in a way like I've never been. I want to burn in a manner that shakes this generation that I'm living in. Is there any takers in the house tonight? Anybody that wants to find their way to the altar where the fire begins to fall. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come like you're hungry. Come like you have some faith that the fire's going to fall in your life. Come with an expectancy and with a fervency and say, God, I've got to have it. Pour it out.